All right. So what classifies something as a strong acid? Why are you doing that? You should be marking on here. There. Wow. That's really loud. I think they just turned it Okay, here we go. So there is a difference between a strong acid and a concentrated acid. So we learned last chapter that something that's concentrated has a lot of the solute particles in it. Okay, so something can be very concentrated. For example, you can have like acetic acid or phosphoric acid even though they're considered weak acids, they can still do a lot of damage if they're very concentrated. Likewise, a strong acid can be very dilute and not cause you any problems at all. So what a strong acid is, is a strong acid is something that when placed in water, it's going to completely break apart into ions. So all of this or almost all of this is going to turn into ions when it's placed in water. All right. One way to, to, to denote that is by looking at the arrow here. If the arrow only goes in one direction, and they're giving you an acid here, then that means that this is a strong acid. So look at the arrow here. If we had a weak acid, do I go into that next? Well, I'll go into that in a minute. There are only six acids that are considered strong acids. So these are the six that are considered strong, if it's not on that list, then it's a weak acid. And it's an acid, it's weak. All right, good. When you get into AP Chem, you have to memorize these six. But in here, I don't make you memorize them. All right. So if it's an acid and it wasn't on that list, then it's going to be considered weak. Weak acids will only partially ionize. And you'll see an arrow that looks like this. Most commonly, you'll see an these arrows that are stacked. Okay, so one goes one direction, one goes the other. Sometimes with the typing and stuff, this is the only way I can get it to work. But oftentimes you'll see them kind of stacked where they go one way or the other. And what this means is that we are going to equilibrium. We're going to have both reactants and products present in our sample. If we were to look at this, if we had a strong acid, it would all break apart. If you have a weak acid, a little bit of it's going to break apart and be these ions, but most of it's going to stay together. So this would be like your hydrogen and chlorine here. And this could be like your hydrogen and your fluorine here. So you'll have a few fluorine break apart and be kind of left behind. But most of it's going to stay together as an ion.
Okay, anybody need more time to draw? All right. So like I was saying with equilibrium, what that means is that your rate of your forward reaction is happening at the same time that your reverse reaction is happening. The reactants and products are in a ratio that does not change. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're in the same amount. So you may have more reactants, and if it's a weak one, you will have more reactants than you will have products. So more of it will be in the reactant and less of it will be in the product area. But it's still going to be exchanging these things back and forth and back and forth. So in the beginning, all of A2 and B2 are present and they're going to start forming 2AB. Once the reaction is at equilibrium, then they're going to also be forming this material. So it's just an exchange back and forth and back and forth. Good. Okay. All right, bases are the same way. We have a strong base. That means that all of it is going to form into these products and it's gonna stay over here. When you get into AP Chem, we actually add math into this and we have like a, a threshold, a break th uh, where we, we say, okay, yeah, it's strong or it's weak based on our math. Um, it's not bad. It's not hard to do. Okay, here are your six strong bases. If it's not on this list, then it's weak. Why is it that there are so few, so few bases that are strong in the same? Well, there's only six of each, so it's not one more than the other, but um, it looks like I did go into some Ka values here with stuff. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to have to add a little bit onto your notes here, but um, I didn't do it on here, so I need to escape and add a couple slides. I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know the answer to that question, Ray. I can't tell you. All right, so we need to talk about Ka values. And we're not going to actually find Ka values, but we're going to talk about um, talk about what um, what they mean. Okay. 
So Ka value for like um, hydrochloric acid. <clears throat> Uh, give me just a second. Let me look this up. One times 10 to the sixth. 1.3 times 10 to the sixth. Okay. And the Ka value of acetic acid, which is going to be a weak acid because it's not on that list, is going to equal... One point eight times ten to the negative five. Okay, so these Ka values, when we're looking at equilibrium, to determine and write them, if we had HCl and we added that into water, one-way arrow, it's going to break up into Cl and hydrogen. Okay. To determine these, what we would do is we would look at the molarity of these and we would do an equation. We're going to ignore the water in the equation and we would put the molarity of the products multiplied by each other over the molarity of the strong acid. And if we put numbers in here, we would come up with this value, this 1.3 times 10 to the 6. <clears throat> if this Ka value is greater than 1, then that means that it's a strong acid. And you can obviously see that this is a strong acid. Right? That's much greater than 1. So this is how you format those. You're going to be asked to format these, but you're not going to be asked to do the calculations in here. When you get into AP, you have to do the calculations. So for this guy up here, he his equation would look like this. His arrows go both directions, indicating that he is weak. So for his equation, for his Ka equation, we know that that is going to equal 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. We looked that up on a table. And that is going to equal our products over our reactants and the molarity of those. These square brackets here mean molarity, which is concentration. Why did you put the two above? Um, because I'm, it's a Monday. There, better? Yeah. There should have been a minus there. There. That looks better. All right. I cleaned it up a little bit. And the bigger this Ka value is, the stronger the acid it is. So if I had one that was like 1.5 times 10 to the negative 7, that would be a weaker acid than this guy. So Ka indicates the strength of that acid. And I think that's about it for this one. So I will hand out your quiz. You have a fat on line that you're going to be working with. I'll get that link up uh, for you while you're taking your quiz.